So, we're going to start this off and then, you know, whatever, I don't, I don't know. Right. She doesn't know. No. So, 21st of March, 1899, Buck Ruxton was born in Bombay, India. He went to the university in Bombay mm -hmm. and he qualified in... He was a physician. He's a physician. Yeah, you said it right. Yay. He specialised in gynaecology, midwifery, other things. And like medicine. That. And medicine. medicine. And then he, his family were very wealthy and they eventually came to England. 1926. In 1926 he came to England. Yeah, and he attended medical courses at London University College Hospital. Mm -hmm. So, 1926, go. Buxton relocated to London University where he studied more medicine. He then went to Edinburgh. How much do I know? And while he was staying at the Royal Colleges of Surgeons, he met his soon to be wife, Isabella. So, Isabella then followed Buxton to England and she gave birth to the first child the following year named Elizabeth. I've got to read this because I can't remember everything. In 1930 Ruxton relocated from London to Lancaster da -da -da -da. where he had a medical practice at 2 Dalton Square. He soon became very popular within the community. People trusted him, they liked him more fool you and he did he didn't charge a lot of people if they couldn't afford the treatment so I think that's why I was popular really because he's giving you know like free stuff away so don't go to him though anyway <laughs> the following year after being in Lancaster his second daughter was born who they named Diane the same year when Diane was born, they employed a maid to look after all the gubbins. Maid. She was called Mary Jane Rogerson. And as time got on, Book and Isabella started to argue, fight, you know, not you get on. Up. Yeah. So Isabella would then go to Edinburgh with the kids to get away from him just to have a bit of you know quality time so a lot of the time it was on his own so but when she did go to Edinburgh Ruxton would often be on the blower to her pleading her to come back because he missed her <laughs> but a lot of the time he'd accused Isabella of having affairs committing adultery just being unfaithful where are they at? if they're down there I'm not bothered so yeah when he used to um, accuse her of adultery and that it then sometimes slap her not good no man slaps women or vice versa so a lot of the time it would all end up at the police station so it was a violent relationship pretty much and because she would get him done for beating her up and on one occasion Buck was reported to say to the police it feels like killing her mm. warnings are there warnings were there dun, dun, dun. even though I'm having a laugh with this it is serious because two people died in a horrible way so Ruxton was convinced that his wife Isabella was having an affair with a man named Robert Edmondson and on the 14th of September 1935 
Isabella Ruxton left to view Blackpool Illuminations and visit her two sisters. She then returned to Dalton Square in the early hours on Sunday the 15th of September. Ruxton, with very bad jealousy and paranoia, this all overwhelmed him. So when Isabella's returned, Ruxton has then strangled Isabella, killing her. You know, and he beat and stabbed a body, and then Ruxton also strangled and killed Mary Jane Rogerson, the maid, because he actually thought that she'd witnessed everything, so he had to get rid of two bodies. So, Ruxton, then after killing the mum and the maid, he then drove his children to Morecambe to where their friends live and. He asked if his friends could look after the kids so he could go back and clean up his mess. So Ruxton then returns to Lancaster. And in the bathroom he's dismembered both bodies in the bath, chopped them up. And he's even gone to the point of removing their eyes, their ears, the lips the fingerprints and the teeth just so the police couldn't get any ID of them sick man so after chopping them up Ruxton then went to a patient's house and asked her help to prepare for the decorators who arrived in the following morning Mrs Hampshire the very nice friend arrived at Dalton Square and found the house a mess. She later testified in court the carpet had been removed from the stairs and part of the floor was littered and strewn with rubbish. And while cleaning stuff out, she's also found a stained suit in the garden in a bag. She also, <laughs> she also discovered burnt towels also in the garden. And then if we fast forward, 29th of September 1935, Susan Haynes Johnson looks over a bridge in Northern Freeshire, town of Moffat, and on the banks by the stream she could see some newspaper like parcels. So she alerts police, they go then to find these parcels where they were found two human heads, thigh bones, a torso, pelvis with advanced decomposition but the thing is though the bodies were wrapped up in the two editions of the Daily Herald dated 31st of August 1935 the newspapers were a special edition and they were printed in Morecambe so now you've got the you can pinpoint the area can't you Morecambe, Heesham, Lancaster so the police thought with it being Printed in the northwest, the victims were from the northwest, so then they began the searches. And this was one of the first murders to use forensic techniques so you can reconstruct part of the bodies and check dental records and everything else. And it became a very high profile murder for Lancaster. Okay, guys, here we are at the Bloody Wall. Um, Check our previous videos to find the story on this. It's quite a good one. Okay, carrying on. Um, we're going into the autopsies now. Um, it seems uh, that the two bodies were transported to the anatomy department of the University of Edinburgh, where they were first treated with ether. Um, that was to prevent further decomposition and destroy all maggot infestation. Yummy. <laughs> James Cooper Brash and Sidney Smith. Uh, conducting their formal autopsies. A further bundle containing human remains was discovered shortly after the two bodies had been transported to the University of Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. It contained two human forearms with hands attached. The fingerprints had not been completely obliterated from the sole pair of hands found with the remains. As such, Investigators were able to obtain a complete set of fingerprints. Dun dun dun! In order to approximate the time of death, 
the victims, Dumfriesia police requested the assistance of a Glasgow-based entomologist named Dr. Alexander Mearns, who, using the then fledgling techniques of forensic entomology to identify the age of the maggots found upon the remains, studied the life cycle and the pupae found upon the bodies in order to approximate a time of death of both okay. victims. Five days before the discovery of the human remains in Moffat, Ruxon had visited the Lancaster police claiming his wife had once again deserted him. He had earlier visited the Morecambe household of the parents of the family maid Mary Jane Rogerson, claiming their daughter having engaged in an affair with a local youth had become pregnant and that his wife had agreed to discreetly take her away from their home to arrange the abortion <coughs> as abortions at that time were legal in Britain Ruxon had urged the Rogersons not to contact the police on the 1st of October the Rogersons visited Dr Ruxon at his practice on the occasion he attempted to placate their fears for Mary Jane's safety by claiming both she and his wife had broken into his safe and stolen £30 before eloping from his household. Despite Ruxon's insistence on this occasion that his wife and Mary Jane would almost certainly return once they had spent the money, the fact Ruxon had now given the Rogersons contrary explanations as to why his wife and their daughter were missing from his household aroused their suspicions. As such, the following day they filed a missing persons report with the Morecambe Police. Ruxton himself would not visit Lancaster Police to formally report his wife and maid as missing until the 4th of October. So on the evening of 12th of October, Lancaster Police arrested Ruxton and questioned him. Ruxton had given him a list of his whereabouts on the said dates between the 14th and 29th of September. The police looked into this, but at a point in, in Kendall, Buxton had knocked, o knocked over a Cumbrian off his bike. So this young youth that he'd knocked off had got his car registration from the car from when he knocked him over. So that put Ruxton to the whereabouts near Melthorpe en route to dumping the bodies. So he lied about that. So straight away he's lying. We know. Ruxton had also denied he'd ever been to Scotland after having established his Lancaster practice. But looking through records and witnesses, they found out that was bull as well. And when they questioned Ruxton on bloodstains in the house, the burnt towels, the bloodied suit, Ruxton had no explanation for this. So this also went again with, towards his arrest. In the early hours of 13th of October, the finger and palm prints upon the second set of human hands discovered in Moffat were discovered to match the impressions upon the items of Mary Jane Rogerson, what she had handled at Dalton Square. So they had her fingerprints, they had her hand link them together. Ruxton was then formally charged with the murder of Mary Jane Rogerson at 7.20 in the morning. When Ruxton heard the recitation of the charge, he stated most... Oh, frick. Most emphatically. Yeah, right. When Ruxton heard the recitation of the charge, he stated most emphatically not, of course not, the farthest thing from my mind, what motive and why, what are you talking about? But they had all this evidence against him, so he didn't have a leg to stand on, really. On the 5th of November, he was further charged with the murder of his wife, whose remains were posi positively identified using the technique forensic anthropology, in which an x-ray of the victim's skull was superimposed on a photograph taken of Isabella Ruxton in life. We do have a picture. <laughs> on the 2nd of March 1936, the trial of Ruxton opened at Manchester's High Court. 
who was tried for the murder of Isabella Ruxton and on this date chose to enter a formal plea of not guilty to the charge of murder. Following this formal plea, a jury was impaneled and sworn to duty. The prosecutors at Ruxton's trial contended that Ruxton, inflamed by jealousy and paranoia, had murdered Isabella Ruxton and Mary Jane Rogerson in the family household and that he had discarded their bodies more than 100 miles from Lancaster in the garden home Lynn Stream in southern uplands of Scotland. So after 11 days in court, Ruxton was found guilty of all the murders. He sobbed in the court, but the jury just were not having that. Um, he was actually found guilty and he was late hanged on the 12th of May, 1936, aged 37, Ruxton was hanged. The bath in which he cut the bodies up ended up at Lancashire Police as a horse trough for the horses and that house where it all happened is just behind me. So this is the house. It's now, after the murders, it was left abandoned for decades and now it's an architect's office, but no one actually lives there. Um, and if you watch Most Haunted, the Halloween episode, they actually went to Ruxton's house and they went inside. So if you want to see inside the house, look for that episode. But there it is. So that's 2 Dalton Square, Lancaster right opposite the park so before we get one over i'm going to say thank you for all your likes all your comments all your shares all your subscribes we love each and every one of you be nice to everyone so we can all live in a nice world i'm going to get back in the car so we can go before we get a ticket say bye baz bye baz <laughs>